Hi, I'm Matt with IFA Country Stores. Today we are going to be pulling some honey from these honey supers and extracting that. I want to show you the process of how to remove the frames from the hive, how to process the honey out of the frames, and get it all jarred up, ready to eat. So let's get some protective gear on and get going. Okay, so we're ready to pull honey supers from the hive. Uh, there are several ways to remove the honey supers. One method is the trap out. The trap out is a board the size of your hive. It has a triangle grid on the bottom of it. You put that underneath the honey super, between the honey super and the brood chambers, and you leave that for a couple days. That allows the bees to go out and not be able to return. You do need to make sure you have no top entrance if you're gonna use that method. Uh, there are fume boards, there are several methods. Today, I'm merely gonna do the shake. Just shake the bees off and brush them off. So we're gonna gain access to this hive. Here, these guys have been smoked already, so they calmed down quite a bit. Now, not every frame in this hive has been drawn out completely, but we're also in a bit of a drought, so that's okay. So any frames I'm not using, or I'm not pulling honey from, I'm just gonna set aside. Now I'm going to be using a five frame nook to transport my honey frames in because I can haul five frames of honey a lot easier than I can haul 10. So I put five in each of these nook boxes and I can pack those, makes it a lot easier. So as I separate these frames here, this frame is mostly capped. That's, I guess, about half cap by the time that goes into the whole mix of all the other frames. It'll work great. So one thing, if I'm using a brush on here, I don't want to get down in those cells. Uh, remember those cells from the side here from the B coming up. So if you're using a brush, you do want to brush upwards to get those bees off. You'll still get some honey on your brush, but nowhere near what you normally would if you went down. I put that frame in my nook, close the lid, and that's going to help me minimize the number of bees I take with me to the house to extract this. Getting in here, the more capped it is. So let's get a few of those caps out. A few of those frames out there, nicely capped. Okay. Now this frame, as you can tell, is fully capped. This side has all but that bottom corner that's fully capped. these last remaining bees off of here. That's a nice heavy frame of honey. Another nicely capped frame. Most of the bees out so I don't bring those back to where I'm going to harvest. Sometimes just a good shake on these frames will be enough to get those bees off, get them going. So 
put that off to the side. Bring my next box up. I'll go through these have they don't have quite as many bees or quite as much honey in them. That's still a good good frame there. The back side's a little more than half capped. Now here in Utah, we're pretty dry. We do live in a desert. And so even pulling some of this honey that's not completely capped will still be okay. Uh, we do want to have it mostly capped. The more capped, the better. But our honey out here is pretty dry. Anyway, so it's not the end of the world if some of that isn't capped off. Let's go to extraction. Today we're going to be extracting some honey, showing you how to use a hot knife, a capping scratcher, a two frame extractor. Uh, we went out earlier today, we pulled some honey frames from the honey supers. So let's get started. Okay, so the way I've got it set up here, um, I've got my frames of honey that I pull from my hive. I have a hot knife that I'm used to take the cap off some of the frames. I've got a capping scratcher here to scratch caps on some. Uh, I have a tub to put my cappings in. Um, I like to keep my hot knife just on an old cookie sheet. Uh, it keeps it from burning the table or, or sitting where it shouldn't be. We've got a two frame hand crank extractor to spin the honey out. And I've got a honey bucket with a filter on it to help filter that honey, get all the pot, uh, wax or, you know, if there's any bee wings or anything like that in there. It gets all the foreign matter out before I put in that bucket with Honeygate where I can go ahead and jar that up. So, uh, get started. I do have my hot knife today plugged into a foot switch. It makes it really handy. I can step on it to turn the knife on. It heats up. I can cap. And then I can step on it to turn the knife off. Uh, that's something you can buy in a lot of different places. Uh, this specific one cost me about 20 bucks. Uh, keeps it from that keeps that knife from just being hot and boiling the honey in the tray as it just sits. So first thing we're going to do, is I'm going to take the lid off of this extractor on that side. Uh, we'll grab one of these honey frames. These are still nice and warm. They just came off the hive today. So when we're doing a hot knife, the hot knife needs to run along these two boards and it's going to take the outer cap off right here to expose that honey. Sometimes that wax and the capping is below these two boards and so the hot knife is not going to get all of it. Uh, but we'll see how well this does today. Turn this on a little bit and then like I said just sliding it back and forth across here. It just takes that outer layer off. Kind of wiggle it back and forth here as it goes down. This is just taking the very outer layer off of the honey. By the way, if you are using a cookie sheet, make sure this is a cookie sheet that's not one of the preferred ones in the kitchen. Because wax is rather difficult to get off this, off this metal. Now, as you can see, uh, lots of this wax is below grade, if you will, below the edge of the boards here. So that's where I take my capping scratcher and I just run it. Uh, keep in mind, these cells are in a V shape. Again, we've got the top of the frame here, so it's going away from me. So I scratch up on that frame, just enough to shred those cappings, or those, yeah, the caps on there. Once you have those with a nice shred across them, we're gonna spin it and do the same on this other side. And then we set this frame in the extractor. I'm 
I'm going to spin that extractor out so I can load the other side. It's important to try and keep your frames even as you're putting them in your extractor. If they're not even and balanced, your extractor is going to dance around quite a bit. Sometimes I'll come up from the bottom. Both ways work. Now I have taken that knife before and tried to use the tip to get this extra little bit of capping. Uh, more times than not, I gouge more wax than I need to. So, that's not something I necessarily have to do. Um, looks like her knife might have been, may have turned off there for a second. We'll just scratch this side. Both of these methods work. You can do everything with a hot knife. You can do everything with a capping scratcher like this. Uh, it just depends on if you're wanting to use wax for anything. If you want extra wax, the capping or the hot knife works better to get all these chunks of wax off. If you're not wanting wax, you just want to harvest honey, capping scratcher works great. So we're going to load this the same way we load the last one. Like so. Now the top of our extractor, top of the frames are facing this way. So I'm going to spin it clockwise and that way the top of the frame is where the honey is being thrown out across. Just get this going. And let it spin for a bit. This is a process that takes a little bit of time. Take some time for this to get all the honey out. I'm watching it fleeing to the side pretty well right now. So we'll just keep going with this and be back with you as soon as it's done. Okay, so we finished extracting the one side uh, with this extractor. Now we have to take these frames out. This side is virtually empty. This side is still full, so we got to spin that around. Put that in. And same with this frame. Spin it around. Back in. And then we spin some the other way. Okay, now that I've harvested both sides, pull these frames out. And they are empty. Do a little close up look here. Got all that honey out of there. So, put these back in here and I'll move on to the next frames. Now, a couple things to note while I'm switching frames here. The, these frames were pulled from the hives about an hour ago. The sooner you can pull the frames and get them into an extractor, the easier they are to extract because that honey is still warm from being in that hive. If you let them sit for several hours, a day, a week, that honey will harden up, it gets colder, it doesn't flow as well. So the faster you can get them extracted, the better off it'll be for you. Uh, also, you'll notice I've got a board under my extractor here. If you don't have a base that your extractor is bolted to, it can wiggle around as you saw here as I was extracting these frames. While it wiggles around, it scratches the floor up, causing damage to the floor. So it is recommended to put a board or something underneath your extractor if you don't have a base for it. 
Uh, this extractor doesn't have legs that can be bolted down, so we put it on a board like this just to protect the flooring there. Uh, I'm going to grab the next frames and just keep working. <music> So I've harvested four frames of honey. Now it's time to empty the extractor. This extractor sits a little low to the ground, so I did pick it up on a table to be able to drain it into my horse strainer. This will get out any foreign objects, wax, uh, bee wings, bee legs, bees, anything that's in that honey that shouldn't be. And then I'll have my clean honey in my bucket that I can use to fill my jars. So I just undo this wing nut here. Lift up on that spout. And now comes honey. Now I just let that drain until the extractor's empty, and then I can go for more.